Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I'll be taking a look at whatever this is from the latest B&M Waiver figures. Taking a look at the packaging we have the usual window box design with the name of the set at the bottom, the gold limited edition sticker and a graphic of the TARDIS on the side. On the back, like the McGann set, we no longer get any images of the figures, just an overwhelming sea of information. And some inaccurate information at that, but I'll come back to that later. Feel free to pause if you want to read it. So, as you can see, for some reason we have three Tenth Doctors in this set. When it was rumoured that we were going to be getting a Tenth Doctor set, I thought, oh, maybe we'll get a new Rose, or a new Donna, maybe a Wolf. Then I thought, ah, oh, I bet we'll finally get that fully articulated Tenth Doctor figure that appeared on eBay last year. And, well, it's funny you say that past me, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the review. So, I'm not going to beat about the bush, I'm going to start with possibly the worst figure character options has released in this line. Yes, even worse than the Earthshock androids from last year. Here we have a Tenth Doctor in an outfit he wears in... well, that's the issue, he doesn't. The outfit is based on a variant comic book cover, however people were very quick to point out that he does not wear the outfit in the comic book itself. So, 10 points for research their character. It's basically the raggedy 11th Doctor body with a tenant head stuck on top. The head is the standard Series 2 sculpt, unfortunately, so this figure looks like it belongs in 2006. But it is at least well painted. He has a blue shirt with lots of rips sculpted in and a dirty wash over the top. The tie has been nicely painted and is at least different to the original Raggedy Doctor. Moving down to the legs, it's a standard pair of 10th Doctor legs, in his brown suit, which always looks grey when character do it for some reason along with the blue pinstripes. It's nice to have the pinstripes, isn't it? He sports his white Converse trainers, which have been given a nice dirty wash over the top. All in all, this figure's perfectly fine in and of itself, but it's so completely pointless, I can't even begin to imagine the mental gymnastics that went on at character options to come up with this one. Moving on, we have a standard 10th Doctor figure in his blue suit. This figure and the coated version is listed as being from the Sarah Jane Adventures story, The Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith, which strangely means that all three figures in this set are based on appearances outside of the main show. The head is the exact same across all three of the figures, which is a real shame because this Doctor is from 2009, so it would have been nice to have the more spiky-haired head instead of this one. Now, finally, character have got the blue on the suit right. The version released in 2007 was just too dark. However, there is a negative. There are no pinstripes. This suit is just one solid lump of blue, which is a huge shame. The shirt is pale blue and the tie has been painted in a similar pattern to the comic book variant. The only other detail worth noting is this version has the red Converse trainers which again have a dirty wash over the top. Overall I'm really glad they've got the suit colour right, but why did they have to go and create another problem? It's a good figure, but it's about 15 years late. Last in the set we have this fella which is the same figure as the last, but with a coat. However, there is something a bit more interesting about this one, and a bit unfortunate. So, as I've not so subtly hinted at already, this figure wasn't supposed to be like this. The original plan was to include the fully articulated 10th Doctor figure that started popping up on eBay just over a year ago. As you can see, the box blurb is inaccurate and still states, in this set, we have a figure of the 10th Doctor in his third variant of outfit and wearing his long duster-style overcoat. This figure has ball-jointed shoulders never released before. I managed to get one of those figures myself, and oh boy is it an improvement. It's insane what a few extra points of articulation can do for a figure. Apparently, this was a factory miscommunication which meant they produced the standard parts instead of the new ones, so character just had to roll with it. It's a massive shame because people were so disappointed with this set when it was announced, and I think having that drawer would really have sold it. The only distinguishing feature between this and the other Tenth Doctor is the coat, which looks nice enough. It's all one solid brown colour apart from the buttons which have been painted darker. Looking at articulation, or lack of, the two Sarah Jane Adventures 10s feature the same limited articulation they always have. The head turns side to side, there's a 360 at the shoulder, a bend at the elbow, 360 at the waist, the legs can kick forwards and out to the side, there's a bend at the knee. The Raggedy 10 shares all of this, but at least adds a 360 at the bicep and at the wrist. Overall, I think this set had a lot of potential, but 99% of that has been missed in the final product. I think the inclusion of an outfit the Doctor never wears is insane, 
and it's just such a shame that the factory error meant we missed out on a great figure. I'm a staunch believer that the 10th Doctor is one of the worst figures character have produced, so if we'd actually had an improved version, this set could have been something great, but I think unfortunately the mark was well and truly missed with this one. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.